welcome to Simple Review. If you find this review to be helpful, consider leaving a like and subscribing. Now in this review, I'm covering the co-op experience of a Metroidvania called Curse of the Sea Rats. When playing this game, you will have one game mode, and that is the story mode, which supports up to four players locally. Story-wise, you play as four prisoners who were transformed into rats by a pirate witch. The witch has also kidnapped the Admiral's son, so it's up to you to save his son and stop the witch to regain your original bodies and freedom. This is further explained with animated cutscenes and voice dialogue. Altogether, you will get a little over 12 hours of content from this story. The four prisoners you play as all come with their own unique attacks and abilities. These attacks and abilities can be further enhanced from a skill tree that uses a currency obtained from defeating enemies. All currency is shared, making it so you must collect enough coins for each person to upgrade their skill tree. All progress is safe for each character, making it so you can swap characters or even play solo with any character you want and retain all skill tree progress. To play co-op, players can hop in when loading a save file or at any portal scattered around the world. Players will all share a screen during gameplay. If you leave your co-op partners behind, they will die from being off screen for too long. On your journey, you will explore a large segmented environment that can be freely explored at any point. Some areas will be unaccessible. To access these, you will need to obtain new abilities such as a double jump. Each segment will have a loading screen in between them. While exploring, you will come across several unique enemies, bosses, chests, and NPCs. NPCs will ask for certain items, which will oftentimes require you to make more progress, then return to them with the item for a reward. Chests will provide key items, healing items, and gold. Combat is pretty simple. You have a standard attack that can be used stationary or in the air, a jump, a parry, and a special ability that is earned by dealing damage. Movement is a little clunky, but manageable. You have a slight slowdown when changing directions. Overall, fighting enemies and bosses offers a moderate difficulty. If playing co-op, there is no change to the difficulty from what I've seen, so having more players can make the game easier. If a player dies while playing co-op, they can be revived by other players if they attack their ghost. This can be done infinitely. If all players are dead at the same time, you will all get sent back to your recent spawn. And that's all that this game has to offer. Now from my experience, I'd have to say I found the game's co-op experience to be decent and the game itself to be okay. All rats offer their own unique attacks and abilities, allowing me and my co-op partner to focus on different playstyles to help in combat. Being able to revive players infinitely allows the game to be more accessible to lower skilled players. Having game difficulty stay the same with more players makes the game more manageable when playing with friends but may be a turnoff for some. I did not find the shared money to work very well. This increased the amount of time we had to spend getting currency to level up. Combat did feel a little rough overall and so did the movement. The segmented world makes it so you have to wait through loading screens often. Unfortunately, at the time of making this review, the game often crashes during loading screens when playing on my Xbox Series X. I will put a pinned comment below this video when this issue gets fixed. So with all that being said, I'd have to give the co-op experience 8 pepperonis out of 10 and the game itself 6.5 pepperonis out of 10. Curse of the Sea Rats is an interesting metroidvania that needs a little bit more polish to shine. And that'll do it for this review. Comment below if you have any questions and I will try to help.